how long do you spend you know of your life say if you've been the person that makes a mistake because we've been talking about when it's been done to us so maybe we'll just flip it here for a minute and i don't know if you're planning on going here i know you probably may have maybe have some other stuff to teach but i'm on a roll here so so when you're the person um that uh that that needs that forgiveness right when you're that when you're that person that um you know you've done everything you can do to uh to make it right and 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 uh and it's just maybe in lip service or yeah yeah no problem right but you truly understand that they really they really haven't accepted your apology they really haven't um um you know i actually i actually found out um that after i apologize and i and i and I made an apology. I I apologized for things I knew that weren't my fault. I I, I did whatever I could do um, to just make peace and restore that relationship, and um and 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 ask for forgiveness for things I hadn't even done. But um, but I knew um, I wasn't forgiven, and I knew um I, and afterwards I kind of was mad at myself because I felt like I had groveled for something and, and that I, and I had, I had repented for the things I hadn't even done just to restore that relationship. Right. And, and, um, and, and it didn't, it got worse. Mm -hmm. It got worse. Right. So in that situation, you know, um, you, you just have to move on. Exactly. That's what I'm saying because the, you have to set up clear boundaries. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And see, in that case, you took full responsibility for stuff that you didn't do. Mm -hmm. And so, peace. yeah. Yeah, just yeah. Make peace. You know, I, and uh, really not even so much for myself, but just for, for the sake of the ministry, for the sake exactly. of the ministry, you know. And uh, and um, so I, I so I think, you know, and I know we've gone a little bit off topic here, but, uh, but I think that, you know, okay, so here's, here's another question. So at what point do you just give up? What type of, at what point do you just say, you know what, I've I've done all I can do. Um, okay, here's a double sided one. <laughs> <laughs> As a person, I've done all I can do to fix it, and it's not going to be fixed. Or on the other side of it, um, the it's still raging it's still raging and um and i'm tired i'm tired of the battle and and um i'm tired of defending myself so the two sides i guess would be number one i've done everything i can do to fix it but on the other side um um i'm tired i'm tired as the person who's being attacked i'm tired of the battle Okay, so then this is where you shift over. I'm going to talk about the second question you had. This is where it's not person to person. It's it's higher level. Mm. And you need to take it to intense prayer from that level. Mm -hmm. yeah. And to stop it. Because there, that's that's what's happening. Because mm. they know it's affecting you and it's... Mm -hmm. So it's a more um, uh, environmental, regional kind of thing. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? There's nothing you can do if somebody wants to operate under that evilness mm -hmm. to hurt and come after people. Mm -hmm. There's, you know, they think that sometimes people will think that that's their that's their job to go in and and just destroy lives mm. nowhere does god ever nowhere jesus did not go around mm -hmm. he always wanted people to come unto him and 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 change yeah and so there's times when what did jesus say wipe the dust off your feet and walk away because they don't believe and they don't write. 
Mm-hmm. So there's times when, when we just have to walk away and take it from a different, we can pray about it, take it from a different angle mm-hmm. and uh, bring people in to pray because it's a higher level kind of stuff that's uh, coming over the territory or over mm-hmm. it's, it is to shut down things. And because and mm-hmm. you'll notice that, that they, they're not just typically, they're not just targeting one person. They're targeting several, quite a few people or different ministries. And you'll also notice they'll go from one to another to another. And so you know that it is not the spirit of the Lord that's doing that. No. Something else. So we have authority over that. We have authority over, over that thing we can bind that up mm-hmm. amen the lord says you know bind the strong man up and then you can plunder the house amen. And, amen. and so we we have to take a look at that and 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 not make it so personally like it's about us because we want to make everything personal and it's, it's funny because i'm looking at your notes one of the first thing that you said is we can't stay stuck yeah, yeah. exactly it stay stuck you know it's uh it's it's uh it's hard to be unstuck, I think. I've just been really transparent, which is what this program is more about. It's just being really um down to earth and transparent and stuff. And um and uh but it, it's I've I've I have found it personally to be difficult to not get stuck. My pastor says uh, on a weekly basis, um if you're gonna be a minister, you're gonna have to toughen up your hide. Yeah. But I have to wonder, maybe you can share a little bit on this. Um, How tough, what's the difference between becoming tough and becoming hard? You know, because I think we can, we can, we can tough it up and say, oh, no, weapon formed against. We all know the scriptures that we can, we, that we can quote, we can sing them, we can quote them or whatever. Right. But what's the difference between just becoming stronger and, and 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 tougher, tougher in the Lord, or not allowing ourselves to become hard, and always well, look suspiciously. You know what I mean? Yeah. As soon as we see a sign of anything, our guard is up. Like, oh no, this is another person that's going to betray me, right? We put a shield up around us, and we typically do that after betrayal. But think about David. He went into the cave. Um, he could have been really, really bitter about, I mean, he was in the palace and he was doing all, he was at a big name, you know, all of this stuff. And then he goes into the cave all by himself. Um, he didn't allow bitterness. Hardness mm-hmm. is when we get bitter and angry and that rules us. And we put this big guard up and we respond in those ways. Mm. We respond. It's pretty obvious. You can see a person that's hard. Mm-hmm. You can see it all over them. Well, David went in there, and even the men that came in, you know, he he questioned him. You know, why are you here? So when you say, you know. I can't remember the word you use, but I will, I'll use this one for David. He was cautious. Mm -hmm. I think we need to be cautious about who we pull into our camp again, Mm -hmm. who we allow to. um, I think that's, I think that's what we, we should do. I really do. But David did not become hard. He kept softened because his heart was always after God and what God wanted. Mm. Right? So in the hardness, you, you can tell the difference. Mm. There's a crust over you. That's just like, people just don't even want to be around you. That's pretty obvious. Mm-hmm. But when you're cautious and wise, careful, whatever mm. word you want to say, that's wis- That's really wisdom. That's God just directing you to give yourself enough time to say, okay, God, is this person, I mean, I have learned, (laughs) I mean, you learn just because somebody says something, just because they behave in a certain way does not mean anything. Mm -hmm. 
their character. You <laughs> look at their character. So if their character is meanness, if their character is putting other people down, if their character is reprimanding and always, you know, that's that's like a sign. Don't allow that because no, we're to be flexible and teachable and loving and all of that, but not a fool, not, you know, we, we kind of, those are the boundary things again. Mm -hmm. I've yeah. learned through that. I watch the character of a person. Mm, yeah. That's and it. I've noticed characters who are leaders. I mean, they're leaders and their character is horrible. And they push more people out than they've kept. Oh, yes. Yeah, I've seen that. Too. Those are the ones that you'll find. And they're very strong. They are the, the, they're the ones that bet will betray you. Where if you go in around a leader that is, um, you know, has the boundaries up there, very wise, careful, checking things out. You know, they're really leaning in the Lord along some things. Then you won't be so, you won't get set up again as much. Uh, when, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, and, and you're right, you know, because, you know, we, we kind of look, I think at, at, um, you know, an attack and we're like, you know, finally it comes to an end. We're like, okay, <sighs> you know, and, and, but there's going to be more. There's going to be more. And this teaching is so great. The things that you're sharing, because, because, you know, I, I believe there's people that are going to listen to this, you know, that are just, um, they don't know how to get through it. They don't know how to get past it. You know, they're asking maybe some of the questions this has been uh, today has been instruction for me. It's been, um, you know, I, I believe that now that I'm sitting here, I'm, I'm believing that, you know, one of the reasons the Holy Spirit brought this subject to my heart was because there were things that I needed to hear, because it is a journey. It is a journey. And the greater the betrayal, the greater the journey, you know, exactly. and, and it's, you know, and, uh, you know, once again, back to the scripture, it wasn't an enemy. You were my best friend. You know, yeah. we, we, we had conversations, we spent time together. And I think those are the, the, uh, the, um, it's 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 like a whole different level right and uh and uh but um do you have more that you want to share because uh well, I, I want you to go ahead if you if you have time i want you to go ahead because we can you know we'll just divide this up into you know a couple of programs three programs 85 programs i don't know <laughs> <laughs> well i think this is a big topic and i think you know um the lord has put this topic on my heart mm -hmm. And so I've done a lot of um, uh, interviews with many people mm. from all walks of life, from all over the world. And what's interesting to me is, is um, how they came out on the other side. Because mm. that's one of the questions I ask is how do you, okay, this was devastating. I can't believe some of these stories have been just mind boggling to me. Mm. Um, but I'll say to them, what's the key that you have that will help other people to get to the other side? And so it's just interesting, you know, most of the people, one of the first things they say is the Holy Spirit. Stay in tune with God. Mm -hmm. I started out with that. Be totally honest. But also listen, mm -hmm. let the Holy Spirit guide you. Do not lose your relationship with the Lord. Mm -hmm. yes. So in this journey that I'm on, I think I'll just kind of share a couple of things here yes. about how the Lord is directing me to write a book. And so some of the stuff I've shared with you uh, today in a general way is things that I've really been pondering about, you know, this is what betrayal is about, um, what we can, and how do we get out of it? What is it that we need to do to get beyond it? So, and you know, it's interesting about that is that one individual said to me, um, because most of the time it's been church hurt that I've 
mm -hmm. um, that so many of these people. And that saddens me. That breaks my heart. It's that this rep, our church represents Christ. And if Christ is being presented in this way, then it's it's wrong. It's false. So I'm really trying to work this out. So not only do I help individuals um, to get beyond betrayal, but also what kind of a leader are you going to grow into? Because every one of us leads somebody. Mm -hmm. Every single one of us lead people. Right, right. And we may not say we're leaders, but we are. So how are we going to lead people forward mm -hmm. and become the body of Christ that he is expects us to be? Remember that godly mm -hmm. character. Yeah. So I'm working through a lot of that. But I also am shifting up here a little bit in my um, what God's calling me to do. And if you don't mind, I'm just going to share what I'm launching uh, right now. I'm going to launch some uh, coaching. And um, the coaching that I'm going to launch is really to help people to become on what I call unstoppable, mm -hmm. a new life stance. Mm -hmm. So that we become the kind of person that God wants us to become, regardless of what hits us. We mm -hmm. have breakthrough in our lives, regardless of what that storm looks like. But one of the group things that uh, God has really put on my heart is what I'm going to call this is catalyst for change when enough is enough. And I believe this is what happened for me. So this is why I am. I titled this, some people kind of look at it a little bit differently, but I'm just kind of curious when you know, when you've had enough, <laughs> everybody knows when I've had enough, <laughs> tolerated enough, you know, you it's. And so I believe what God was showing me is that this, when we've had enough, this is a time when change will take place. Mm-hmm. This is when we'll cross over. We cross over this threshold where, you know what? Uh, I'm just going to sit. I've been sitting, shutting my mouth, not saying a word, not setting boundaries, tolerating whatever I have to tolerate. Uh, I cross over into this place where I get clarity in the Lord and I get confidence. Mm -hmm. And so I want to do a group coaching. It's an, It's going to be like an eight-week uh, coaching, um, where I'm hopefully this is my goal, and I feel like I'm working through it, and I know God's going to help me. But we can come out of isolation, which is what betrayal does to us, and go into this place where you know we can be effective as people again mm -hmm. for the Lord and for His kingdom. We don't have to, we can have this victorious mindset instead of this. I am nothing, <laughs> you know, all of this other stuff. But I think um, we'll, we can step into greater levels of courage. And, and like I said, I've used the word tenacity a lot. And the, the reason why I use that word is because um, I think that's what God, we're in, entering into a season and a time when we have to come become tenacious mm -hmm. about who we are in Christ and what we're going to be doing for him because we're getting ready for the harvest so we've got to shift this up mm. so my website is going to be coming out here within the next couple of days where this this will be offered um i haven't set a, a date beginning date so if anybody's interested at all in doing um uh, this type of group is a group coaching um then then um they can private message me um send me an email at the lowest dwelling at gmail.com or we'll put all that stuff my, we'll put yeah. all that stuff in in the comments and that like when when, when, yeah. when this goes to air and um now i can't remember if you said it or not but um the people should under this is going to be a zoom a zoom yes it is. Zoom. so it's by zoom so um um Apostle Lois is located in Holton, Maine. So you, will you be having in person as well? 
or just Zoom? Well, I no, th these are all going to be on either. Like if I do one-on-one -on -one coaching, mm -hmm. which they can choose, then I can do phone or Zoom. Okay. Uh, but I think it's just, you know, we'll we'll cross that when we get there. Yeah. But, but if, if somebody needs that one-on-one, -on -one, we'll cross that over. But right now it's going to be uh, Zoom for the coaching. Oh, yeah. Okay. And that's, because that's I just feel like God has just got this on my heart. And I've already got quite a bit of this um, set up where God is. Well, as you know, your experiences plus the journey out. Mm -hmm. It's phenomenal. And I think we need to pull more people out of that's this right. place. There's life into, after. Into where they're becoming more effective. Mm-hmm. We don't do anybody any good if we're just isolating ourselves and living under this. Yeah, that's true. That's 100% true. And I, that's why I was thinking too, you know, and sometimes it's a long journey for some, sometimes it's a shorter journey for some, but there does come a time for anybody that's listening. Uh, and I want to 100%, 1000%, I want to recommend that if you can do this Zoom coaching with Apostle Lois, that you do it. Um, because um, that her life is about empowering. As a matter of fact, your ministry is Empowering Life Center, correct? Mm -hmm. And EmpoweringLife.org, empowering is that your old website? EmpoweringLifeCenter.org. Center. No, wait, I'm, I apologize. I took that. Uh, that's changing up. So, so Lois, just go Lois, to LoisFlewelling.com. LoisFlewelling.com. And uh, so, so... There's just tons of tools. There's tons of tools. Um, you know, the enemy would like for people to stay back in their hurt, to stay back in their doubt, to stay back in the pain and everything. And when when that happens, what it's really doing is it's stopping um, it's stopping you from fulfilling God's call in your life and everything. It's stopping you from being everything and, and just having joy, living a joyful right. life, living yeah. a peaceful life, right? So why not? Why not? You know, sometimes we need to invest in ourselves. Sometimes we need to invest in ourselves and our well-being and our spiritual well-being, mentally, emotionally, all those areas, right? And and I find that when you're when you're spiritual, when you're emotionally and mentally um um well, it just it it it, it gives it makes you available for all the spiritual things exactly. that God has, right? So um um and the thing I think to the people you need to understand is is you're not alone. Right. You're not alone. Um, sometimes, you know, and I can tell you in seasons of betrayal, I have felt I was the only one, you know, um, uh, um, I'm, you know, I'm thinking of the prophet Elijah in the cave, you know, he was positive, you know, that, that he was the only prophet that was left or whatever, you know, and then, you know, he was told, no, there's all these other ones that haven't bowed their knee, you know, you're not alone. You're not the only one. Right. But we can feel that way in these times of, of betrayal and attack and everything. And uh, so it's important to surround yourself. So I really want to invite people to actually reach out, really pray about it, reach out uh, to Apostle Lois. As I said, we will put, you know, in the comments that I'm at, we've, we've been on here for a while. So I have a feeling this will be two separate programs. So mm -hmm. we'll, this Monday night coming and the following Monday night, we're going to, we're going to air the two um, portions of this particular conversation and um, in those, we will put the, the ways to reach you and everything. Uh, Apostle Lois as well has written several books, several mm -hmm. books. She also has other courses, other online courses, correct? Other um, um, teachings that she's done, group studies that she's done, all kinds of things. Um, this is a woman. I'll tell you what, this woman can write a book like in two days. It's just, I think you've written one like literally in a short period of time recently just in the last year yeah. right yes i did how, well how many it's hours? actually a devotional it's called living under an open heaven and um god just said write your devotions i was a i went a week in in uh, florida mm -hmm. and the lord the first night i was there he said write your devotionals and i went what <laughs> mm -hmm. but i did and uh so two weeks later I have I have 30 devotionals written mm -hmm. all on the theme of living under an open heaven, which God did. He did it for me. 
during that time and brought those highlighted those scriptures so it's a real small book but it's it's got uh scripture references and then it's all about entering in and living under that intimate place mm -hmm. with the lord it's uh, to me it's powerful because oh. i experienced so much of it powerfully Amen. and then i wasn't planning on uh, doing it in a book and then the Lord said no I want you to do it in a book so I did it in a book and so it is up on Amazon as well as on it will be on my site as yeah. well and all your books are on Amazon right the yes. Canadian and yes, the American yeah. one so yeah. so they're on both my... or dot com and just look for Lois Blue Welling and you will find her books um you know we're today we're, we're not coming to you as I said before as people who are just talking, um, we, we've been through it. We know there's life after. And, um, and I believe that um, out of this, out of this conversation, for those who listen, there will be those who, um, who are going to be healed, be healed and, and know that there's, there's hope, there's life after betrayal. So um, was there anything else we were going to share or are we good or, I think we're good. Okay. okay. Well, I will say, um, what time is your service on Sunday? Now, I, I played piano for you for a couple of years. I should know <laughs> what time it is, but um, I, ha I haven't been across the border since before COVID. So I sh I've been I've been ordered to get my um, to get my passport so I can get on that. But what time is your service on Sundays? It's um, we actually start at quarter of ten on okay. Sunday, morning. nine forty-five. 95, yes, and that it's called is the gathering. Is yeah. our church is called the gathering, uh, and then we are going to have one event coming up in July, um, which is July twenty eighth, I believe. Um, we have uh, it's a Friday night, and um, uh, we're, we've got the worship team from it's Aaron Netto and Josh Green is coming oh. down from Fort Kent. And uh, John and Nancy Burpee will be with us. Ooh. And um, we were just going to do worship night. And then John and Nancy haven't been in town. So I said, oh, okay, let's put you to work. I'm we will have... be, uh, he'll be doing a small teaching and then we'll do ministry as well. I'm going to have to try and get my passport on the go before then. Yeah. I haven't, I haven't, John and I went to Bible college together. So I haven't yeah. seen him for probably several years now, you know, with the border. Yeah, he was telling me about what his message was going to be today. And I think it's, it's, it's going to be good. Yeah, so. yeah. Man, he's the most organized guy I know. <laughs> uh, though I tend to get my messages three seconds before I have to speak. <laughs> so anyway, thank you so much. Thank you so much, my dear friend, Apostle Lois. And um, I'm excited for, us uh for people to be able to receive this and um we've talked about a lot of things today we've talked about a lot of areas and i think one of the things that those of you who listen is your understanding as i mentioned before you know we we know what it feels like you know it's, sometimes we can get people up there spouting off this is what you do you do this 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 is this and they you know they have no idea they have no idea but um but um we know what it's like to go through those those times when you feel like the world's against you and you feel like there's no way out of the cave and um and there is a way out praise the lord so yes. thank you so much for listening apostle lois thank you so much and uh we will can i say can i say one more thing say whatever you want <laughs> well a vision just came well not a vision but a picture uh it's a picture that i had just seen it's actually on my website that and god just brought that back to my attention and in the picture it is it's got these blossoms coming over and underneath is the water and um i i feel like the lord is saying here if you will drink of my water i will cause you to blossom and i feel like that's a word to all of us including me so i just encourage you go and drink from the well from the water of god soak yourself in it get intimate with him because when it you know and i see your blossoms there on your you know flowers there but it's like i saw and it's like the blossoms are coming and hanging out over the water 
It's the only way that we're going to have that life after betrayal. And I feel like some are saying, eh, I don't know. You know, I don't know if I'll ever blossom again or ever. I believe the Lord is speaking directly to you. You will blossom again, but drink of my well. Drink Amen. my water and Amen. you will. Amen. Awesome. Apostle Oles, why, why don't you just pray us out? Just kind of just kind of pray for those who might be listening and yeah. uh, before we close out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, Lord God, I thank you for every single person that is listening today. I thank you that that Lord God, as this message goes forth, Lord Jesus, I believe that is cutting through. It is cutting through whatever it is that is hindering them, that is limiting them from serving you and stepping back out in faith in the kingdom of God and doing what you have called them to do. I just thank you, Lord, that I see them drinking of your water and getting their, they're getting thirstier and thirstier and thirstier. And I thank you, Lord, that you're covering them with your water. You're covering them with your blood mm. and the blossoms are starting to come. And I thank you, Jesus, <laughs> that as these blossoms come, they're going to go out all over everywhere. I just see them going. It's not going to just stay near the water that's right there with them, but the it's going to flow with them. The water is going to go with them and that their blossoms are going to touch lives all over the world. So I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for every single person. You are not stuck. In fact, you are unstuck right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I just feel that so strongly that you are now unstuck. Go forth, my mighty men and women. Go forth in my name and do, whoa, and plunder. I hear this, and plunder the strong man's house. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Praise Jesus. You. I think that means authority. But anyway, thank Praise you, Lord. Jesus. Praise the Lord. <laughs> All right. I think I'm done now. <laughs> thank you so much, my dear friend. Yeah. God bless you. Thank you, everybody who is listening. We'll listen to this and, uh, and we just pray that it blesses you as we talk about things that we need to talk about. Because so there's things that we need to talk about that don't get talked about enough. So yeah. God bless you all. Um, tune in Monday night on, um, uh, we need to talk about that Facebook page. Um, it'll also be on my personal Facebook page, Kim White. And um, I'm sure that Apostle Lois will probably share it over on hers. And um and it will be aired. It will be up probably about um eight o'clock, eight o'clock Eastern, I would say, nine o'clock Atlantic. And we'll get her going. Amen. Thank you. God bless everybody.